My name is Zachary McNaughton, and I am not a professional angler. I've been fishing for over 20 years, and the one thing that these years have taught me most is that I have a lot to learn. So let's meet some of Vermont's true master anglers, and together we'll discover some fishing techniques and explore the many species that this great state has to offer. We're headed up to Southern Lake Champlain today to meet up with Ryan Daly and his friend Rob. We're going to be trolling for big channel catfish using planer boards and cut bait. I've never heard of trolling for catfish with planer boards, so I looked it up online and there's very little information available on this technique. There's one other video as of the date that I produced this video on YouTube teaching this technique. And uh, so I'm really excited to, to really premiere it in this show and get the word out there about how to do this. So what we're doing for a program here is we're pulling planer boards and you'll notice two sets out here on either side and two long lines uh, and we run it off this drift rack that we built in-house and what, we're, what, the, what the goal is here is to keep minimum I try to keep about 80 feet to 100 feet between the two outside boards so what you're trying to do is you're trying to cover the water about every 20 feet or so I want a bait and the goal here really is to cover as much water as possible not only linearly down the lake but also across the water so that you're getting the ledges you're getting the channel you're getting the shallows so no matter where those fish are you're trying to present a bait to them so what we do is we rig a three-way crane swivel and you always rig your line off the crane right and then you always want to put your sinker behind it and remain in front of it. That way it's always pulling as intended. And you tie a short leader somewhere in the middle, put a chain swivel, keeps it from spinning up and binding, it'll come back on itself. And a peg float, I use two and a half or three inch peg floats with an inline rattle, a bursa rattle, and then a circle hook of your size. And then all we do with these is take this quick snap you can put a little drop line on it and make it sacrificial if you want. If you're in a really snaggy area here, I don't really worry about it. So we just clip them on just like that. And that is your drift rig. And I always, always cut the belly out, the gut pocket or that water will channel in there and it'll spin your rig up. And that's how you get a twisted rig. I'll take that hook, go right in the eyeball. Right out the top of the brain pan, just like that. So you've got as much of that gap exposed as possible. So you set your long lines out and you let them run. And then you set your outside planer boards and you let them get out there. And once they start to walk out, then you'll grab your inside lines and you'll start setting those. Oh, there you go, right there. Yep. That was jumping. Here, I'll let you take that fish. There you go, there you go, reel on him. Now pick him up. Wow, that's impressive. Isn't it? So I'm just gonna bring this one in and chuck it up to the boat. Yep. And then you can fight him in, out, wherever you wanna go. That is awesome. He is peeling drag on me. I was not expecting this much weight, to be honest with you. There you yeah. go. I'm gonna have you step back and I'm gonna get that board off. Keep coming. Yep. Oh, I see, just send it down to the fish. Yep, and I never worry about the board. That board is never gonna not I never lost the fish because the board was still on the line. Good. Oh my goodness! I was not expecting that just then. Man. Holy crap. Nice color, nice class of fish. Let's hope they only get bigger from here. Do this one. Yep. First cat of the day. That is a beauty. You are 30 inches on the dock. 30 inches. Sweet. That was awesome. And he's gone. Oh, there's another one right there. We'll drop the planer board. Wow. <laughs> so when you're bringing a fish in, um, 
What I try to do is I never try to have one rod dedicated to the outside or the inside. I want to be able to constantly let the inside planer board become the outside planer board. So if that outside board hits, I reel it around and then I let the inside board out and now that becomes the outside board and the next one goes in. So you're never trying to cut around. For too long, I tried to walk around the outside of the board or walk inside it and come over the top and it never panned out. A lot of the times we would get hung up on ourselves. So really what you want to do is just stay out of your own way. Yep, you just keep doing your thing, man. I'm glad I called ahead last night. All right. Make sure everybody was here this morning. <laughs> <laughs> and that break. That's awesome, man. I was not expecting to fish that big when it came up. That kind of caught me off guard. Oh, man. man. So I, people were like, you channel catfish? And I was like, man, you just don't understand. So you come to Vermont and try our channel cats. I would have to say this is probably one of the top five channel cat fishers in the world. Ooh. Yeah, that's about your average, you know three and a half to four pound fish. Nice. That's Ooh. a fish, that's a fish. There we go. Oh, jeez. You don't want to come up either. It feels like he's coming in pretty easy compared to that other one. Uh, A small one? Yeah. Sweet. Beauty. There's another nice beauty. Little one, but. Number three. But still a huge fit. <laughs> Calling it a little one, right? Yeah. That's about the national average right there, though. I mean, when you get down south and stuff, that's considered a good channel cat. That would be a huge channel cat. Oh, yeah. He's still there. Real on <laughs> oh, yeah. Nice. Without the planer board, it's different when you you connect with them right away, you know? Yeah. Actually, generally speaking, those long lines produce bigger fish. I don't know if it's generally because we're sitting in the main part of the channel. But... Right. The deep, this is the deepest line, right? Right. It is coming up pretty easy now, but... So where's the best place to fight this guy? You'll lift that rod? I'll or? lift that rod for you yeah. and you can walk right underneath him. A rod will grab him for you. So how far back would you say? Um, that one was only back maybe uh, 125 feet or so. Rob, I think, is the farthest one out right now. Nice. <laughs> Always good action. All right? Now you can keep moving up in the class size. September 1st is my start date for, for like strictly planer board season. Yeah. After September 1st, that's all I'm doing is pulling planer boards. Even if it's 100 degrees on September 1st, yeah. it's time. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. I think he must be swimming right at me. Yeah, probably. He was doing it. Oh, there it is. Oh. <laughs> Where do you want me to go? Uh, you're walking right to this side. Nice. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> this is why I said if we're going to do it, we're going to do it in September or October. Because the fishing is just wild. I mean, they just can't help themselves. They have to eat. Look at that cat. That is a beauty. Oh, yeah. I'll get your planer board clip. Well, that's a nice one, man. Where are you with that? I'm right here, buddy. Right here, good buddy. There we go. Ooh, ooh. Another beautiful fish. Look at that. Fat, happy belly on that fat, happy cat. Nice catch, man. Yeah. Let me get my hand hot because I'm not moving the grippers. Today. This one's falling back. Yep. You see how it's gradually loading? 
Do you think that's a fish? No, it's, no, it's, it's most likely a hanging up on yeah. the bottom. Oh, that's fish though. It just hammered down. Yep. Well. There, see that? Here. Here you go. Yeah. Yeah, when you see it make that step oh. down into the water, you know that there's a fish. But when you get that slow hydraulic load, more often than not, it's loading up on something. Yeah. What I think happened there was that fish saw that bait snag back. Yeah. And he smacked it. Yeah, you don't this want. Is, I don't want people to think than, all they ever catch is twenty pounders, and they're disappointed. Is, yeah, it's still bigger than most bass people catch. That's a good pull. That's a good takedown. Outside. Whoa! That's that same one again. Hit it Got on him. A dead run. Nice fish. Yep. Man, you just got the good timing. Look at that. Woo! Oh man, Zach, you should have taken this fish, my man. Oh, oh my God! <laughs> holy, bro! When I say it's a good fish, I ain't cow. That is a beast. Yep. Holy cow! He told me to grab the rod. I should have listened. <laughs> <laughs> I don't usually lie when I say it's a pleasure. <laughs> oh man, bite hung on you. That's, that's every bit as big as the one I caught this year. There's 33 right there, I yeah, believe. Get it. Yup, 33. <laughs> yeah, I got really excited too. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> that long line comes on. Then this one. Yep. Oh yeah. Got him. Nice. Oh! Whoa! Whoa! That was a catch. That was an angry catch fish catch when I first picked that up. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's another beast. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. Dude, that slowed us down to point one. And Look, at that five. Thing. Oh. Look at that thing. Look at that thing. Pig. That's a, that's a champagne pig. Very nice. Oh. Man, my arms are killing me. That was awesome, man. Oh, Thank you. Man. man, this has been one of our best days so far this year, too, I think, as far as big fish are concerned. Thanks for watching this episode of Vermont Master Anglers. For more content, visit our Facebook page at Vermont Master Anglers. If you're watching us on YouTube, please like and subscribe.